Hello everyone and thanks for watching this short video on the new QuickBooks Online. I'm going to quickly go through some key navigation, access points, and just kind of an overview of where you'll find things, whether you're brand new to QuickBooks Online or maybe you have just come from QuickBooks Online Classic or the old version, but this would be the new and it is a radical departure from what you have known uh, over the past 10 years anyway. Most clients will be on the new QuickBooks Online within the next year. So on the home page, I have I can go right to open invoices, overdue, as well as what's been paid. I can see my expenses, and I can drill into all this as well. This will bring me to a transaction report. Anything red is really something that needs attention, obviously, for that color. It's kind of obvious. And then under bank accounts, I have 12 transactions that need attention. I can go to an overdue invoice, etc. Let me go to the invoice number 1024 just to show you what it looks like. Notice it kind of falls down on top of the window I was just on. Though in QuickBooks Online, you can right-click and duplicate and have different tabs for every window and then pull it on a different monitor. That's all supported with the new QuickBooks Online. However, I'm finding personally I'm doing it less because of just how slick and fast the program is. I can go right to receive payment. Okay, I'm going to X out and notice I'm brought back right back to the home page. I don't have to click the back button or something like that or miss my place, if, if you will. Before we go into the left navigation panel, uh, I'm scrolling down, so you have the activity storyline on the right there, and then you have your P&L. Uh, all the charts and graphs are drillable. I'm going to click the Quick Create tab in the top three, the three set of icons. I believe they call that the candy bar. I'm going to click the plus sign there. Quick Create tab shows all the different transactions within QuickBooks Online that are supported and that I can create right on the fly. Very quick. Um, notice on the left, the company and banking menu are gone if you are an older QuickBooks Online user. So we have taken those features. They're still in here. All the, the tools of the new QuickBooks Online match the tools of the old. They're just in a different place. Okay, but the left nav panel is obvious, right? It, most people use Outlook. Okay, so we want it to be familiar to you. Then you have the home page and the activity feed I just showed you. Here's a quick create uh, drop down or area where I can go to an invoice, receive payment, write a check or a bill paycheck. Here's where you enter time. Here's where you do a bank transfer, bank deposit, or journal enter your statement. The gear icon. If I click on that, here's where I can manage users. Here's where I can go to company settings, right, for preferences, as well as could go and do a reconciliation for the file, if you will. I probably haven't done any. It's probably blank. So quite a bit here, and you'll recognize when I go to company settings, it's preferences. You guys have seen that from QuickBooks Online. The chart of accounts. Notice your lists are just a lot easier visually on the eyes. There's just more headroom here between rows, and you can either double click or I can actually click and then go to a report or edit or what have you. And that's the chart of account. Click edit, and there it is. Edit that window. For registers, I go to transactions registers on the left, and those are all my registers. I can double click that. It brings me into the checking account register. Okay. So more on the gear icon, again, manage your account information, sign out, do a budget, go to the activity log, but of course that's under reports as well. So there's many things you can get to from two or three different places. And then of course quick create. Next to quick create is the recent transaction icon where I can just click in on recent transactions that I've created. When I click X, it goes back to where I left off. Let's go to customers. Here's kind of your customer list. If I drill into an invoice or the name, it's going to bring me into the customer center for that particular customer and all their transactions. And I can do batch actions like printing and sending, or I can filter, whether it's just open invoices or estimates or something like that. And of course, you can check it off and I can go to receive payment, which will bring me there. Or I can go ahead and send the invoice to the client and remind them that it's, that it's due there. And I can create new transactions. So all from the customer's uh, list if you will and then there's a money bar both for customers and you'll see with vendors so I can see any open estimates unbuild activity open invoices overdue as well as what's been paid and the action column will always have an option based on what the actual row is of what would be the next step or a couple steps you could take okay and there are some settings here uh, if you want to edit the columns and how many rows you want to show quick search for a customer sort by name or the batch actions Similar with vendors. Okay, I have a couple open purchase orders. I can go right there. My next step is to create a bill. It's going to go ahead and bring me right to the bill. Okay, and then I can quickly add the bill in this drawer here that opens up. Or if I just gone to a bill for Tiny's Nursery, this would open up. Let me show it to you that way. Click the Quick Create Bill. Choose Tiny's Nursery. I love this drawer opening on the right. Check this out. 
See, now I can add the PO that way if I want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. And it brings me back to where I left off. Okay, here's open bills, overdue bills. I can go make a payment. Here's what the pay bill window looks like. It's already linked to the bill. I can choose my particular uh, payment method. Go ahead and click save and close. And you X out, you're brought back to where you were. Similar with employees, uh, though I don't believe I have payroll turned on, but in the employees, it'll show, you know, the employees. Ah, huh, I actually have it turned on after all, so I can actually run payroll. I can drill in on the employee if I want to, but let's go ahead and run payroll and see what that looks like. Should bring me to the creating a paycheck section. There it is. I can put in the particular hours, and then, you know, a couple, three clicks, I'm done. Okay, choose what uh, asset account is being credited. Here's the pay period, and I can go ahead and preview payroll. I go ahead and save for later. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and X out. Now, transactions, if you don't use the quick create, again, all of them are here. This is great for like the shoebox. However, under the transaction section, I have banking, which would bring me to the download a transaction window. You can also get there from home on the right. All right, so you, I'm going to show you this way to get here and start working on my unaccepted transactions versus accepted transactions. So this is these are the, the online banking, or as we call it, downloaded transactions. Or if I go from home, I can click on 12 transactions there. It's going to bring me back to the same place. Okay, let's go back to transactions. Sales. Now this is for actual sales transactions where I can come in and create invoice or a payment or an estimate or sales receipt and similar. Money bars right here. So I can look at the unbilled activity and I can start an invoice for this time that's been assigned to a job. Okay. Expenses much the same way that action column is critical it tells me what's next right so i have an open bill here the cal telephone this is important your client's going to go write a check let's choose cal here and in the drawer it shows all the bills i can add to this check when i add a bill here notice the name of the check it's going to change it to a bill payment right so it prevents the mistake before it happens let me x out and then I already showed you registers, pretty easy to go there. And then reports, we've kind of consolidated reports down on the left there, and we've done it in four different sections, recommended, frequently run, my custom reports are all reports. Right? If you want to see all the reports, they're right there, but we've changed how we've you know, termed them. So I can review sales, and it gives me some sales by customer, some may detail, income by customer, you know, things like that, sales by product. Frequently run will be the reports you run often. It'll just start falling in there. And then my custom reports are actually the uh, memorized reports. Finally, it, it opens with recommended reports. Taxes, yep, sales tax and payroll tax. I'll go to sales tax right now. And here is where I can make my sales tax payments or view reports or edit the sales tax settings. Okay, similar with payroll tax if you have payroll turned on. Okay. So let me go back to home and really simple, fast, the workflow just makes sense. I, I am not really duplicating tabs anymore and putting them on other monitors, though you can. I just don't feel like I need to because of how windows open on top of each other. And then when I close them out or save them, they always bring me back to the place where I was, where I started from. Again, some key things to point out before I end uh, the video. Recent transactions and also the search icon. I can do an advanced search and click search, it's going to show all the transactions in the file. Of course, you're going to filter it by, you know, let's say bill payments and maybe by vendor if you want to. I can do Bob's Burger Joint. It doesn't have any. But still, the quick create for all the transactions that you'd want to create quickly and then just exit out for it to go away. And then if you're unsure and I went too fast, where are preferences, where are managed users, where do I go to reconcile, where do I do a budget, where are some of the company and banking options, Click the gear icon, and they're right there, including to import desktop data from QuickBooks. Hope that was helpful, and hope you guys really enjoy the new QuickBooks Online. Thank you.